Welcome to a very confusing episode, hopefully made simple on this episode of the Fast Lane Car, because today we're talking about the 2021 Jeep Wrangler. This is your ultimate buyer's guide. Now, for 2021, there are six different engine options in the Wrangler. There are over 13 different trims. It is vastly overwhelming, but we're gonna make it simple today because I'm a big Wrangler fan. We've owned every generation of Wrangler and I've been very fortunate to drive pretty much every trim of the new Jeep Wrangler known as the JL. So I'm gonna tell you the options you should buy and the options you should definitely avoid because that's probably in some cases more important. And now for something completely different. There's nothing like that wind in the hair, or should I say, wind in the helmet experience riding a proper motorcycle like this uh, Amazon Chinese bike. But did you know that two out of three guys experience some sort of male pattern baldness by the time they are 35? And you wanna catch it before it's too late. Let me hop onto this beast and take her for a spin. You used to have to go visit a doctor for a prescription. Oh, look at that. But now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get a prescription sent right to your home. And you've probably never seen it at this price. Go to keeps.com slash TFL to receive 50% off your first order or click on the link in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash TFL. All right, now back to the video. So let's dive right into it. Now the Jeep Wrangler, it's available in both two and four door configuration. This is gonna be the first question you have to ask yourself when you're buying a Wrangler, and I'm just gonna put it very simply, if you have family, if you have friends, if you have luggage that you are regularly hauling, you're gonna to wanna to buy the four-door Wrangler, also called the Wrangler Unlimited. The two-door Wrangler, it looks better, it's arguably a little bit better off-road, but it just isn't all that practical. The rear seats are very difficult to get in and out of, and the trunk is tiny. And you see that actually in the marketplace, the four-door vastly outsells the two-door, and there's a good reason for that. Now, give or take, the four-door is gonna be about $4,000 more than the two-door Wrangler, but it's worth it, and trust me, when you go to resell the Wrangler, it's gonna be much easier to resell an unlimited versus a standard two-door. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna stick with the four-door Wrangler. That's the one that the vast majority of you out there are buying, so when we're build and pricing these Wranglers out on the website and we're talking about options, that's the one we're gonna focus on, but it's worth noting that the two-door Wrangler also has fairly similar options when compared to the four-door. Now let's dive in to the engines. There are six of them. I kid you not, six different engine options for 2021. Now the base engine, the standard engine, is a 3.6 liter V6. It's called the Pentastar V6. It makes 285 horsepower. There's also a two liter turbocharged engine uh, that makes 270 horsepower. There's a 3.6 liter V6 with an option called e-torque, which is basically a mild hybrid system that combines a small electric motor with the gasoline engine. Then you've got the three liter turbo diesel. It makes 260 horsepower but it is a torque monster at over 400 pound feet. Stepping up from that, we have two special variations which aren't currently on the market but are coming soon. We've got a full plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, so basically it's got a two liter gasoline engine and a very large battery. You can go about 25 miles on a single charge. And then there is the top dog, the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. Now, I'm gonna be very realistic. I know that most of you out there are probably not gonna buy the big plug-in hybrid or the 6.4 liter V8 because they are very expensive. So we're gonna focus on primarily three main engine versions, the 3.6 V6, the two liter turbo, and the three liter diesel. Well, that was all very confusing, but let's just break it down, keep it really simple. Which engine should you buy? I've driven these engines. They're certainly very different, and they certainly cost different amounts. So the standard engine is the V6 gas engine with the manual transmission. That's gonna be a $0 option. That's what comes included at the base price. Stepping up from there, you have the two liter turbo with an automatic transmission. That is a $1,500 option uh, from the base. Up from there is the V6 with an automatic transmission. That's gonna be a $2,000 option from the base. And then the top dog is the three liter turbocharged diesel. Give or take a $6,000 option when you compare it to the base engine. So in my opinion, the engine you should stick with is the V6. 
the Pentastar V6. Here's why. It has been around since 2012, and it has proven itself to be pretty darn reliable. They use it in pretty much all the vehicles throughout the Jeep lineup. You've got the uh, Grand Cherokee, it's also in the Rams, it's in the minivans, it's just across the board. They build hundreds of thousands of the Pentastar V6. It's easy to drive, it's not all that fuel efficient, but it's not that much of a gas hog either, and it's just a solid, dependable power plant. That is the engine you want. Now ideally, in a perfect world, I would get it with the manual transmission, but I know not a lot of people buy manuals, so you're going to be stuck with the e-torque version of the V6. E-torque is basically like a standard V6 with a really beefy starter motor. So when you come to a stop, the engine turns off. When you accelerate, it gives you like a little jolt of electricity through this belt-driven uh, motor, and that kind of helps you take off. It's supposed to improve fuel economy a little bit. I honestly, I don't love the e-torque system that much. It doesn't really give you that much of a benefit and adds a little bit of complexity, but I would still stick with the gasoline V6. Now let's talk about the four-cylinder turbo. It is quicker, believe it or not, especially at altitude. Turbocharging definitely helps with the elevation loss, and it's got more torque than the V6. The reason I don't like the 2.0-liter very much, uh, it just doesn't feel that great in the Jeep. It doesn't have a very smooth power delivery. Um, we also had one with the e-torque system a couple years ago, and that gave us a, a couple of issues as well. So I would go with the tried and true V6, unless you're planning on putting massive tires on it, like over 40 inch tall tires, then you're gonna want the turbo diesel. But apart from that, I wouldn't justify the price of a turbo diesel. It is more efficient than the gasoline engines, but six grand is a lot of money. And it's also uh, an eco diesel, which in the past has uh, not had the best track record for reliability. So stick with the 3.6 liter V6. All right, let's move on to trims. There are, I kid you not, 13 different trims in the four-door Wrangler, but fear not, it really breaks down into three primary trims, and then there are special editions on top of that. You've got the Sport, which is kind of the entry-level trim, the Sahara, which is the luxury trim, and the Rubicon, which is the top dog trim. Now, most people, if you have the money for it, would go straight for the Rubicon because it's got the kind of the coolest look to it, and uh, the sales folks will tell you it's by far the best off-road, and that is true. But for 99% of people, there's no reason to get the Rubicon because it just gives you more capability than you'll ever need, and you're better off saving, in some cases, upwards of $10,000 getting a Sport or a Sahara, uh, and you're still gonna have just as much fun both on and off-road. So let's talk about the very base end of the spectrum, the Sport. Starts at $33,210 in four four-door form. You're never going to see this vehicle on the dealership lot. You're just not. They are <laughs> they are kind of funny to look at because they've got these little itty bitty tiny bare steel wheels. They have roll-up windows. They don't even have power locks. This is the most basic of basic Wrangler and dealers don't want to spec them out because quite honestly they don't make a lot of money off of them. So you're never really going to see these in the real world unless you custom order it. Basically if you get a sport Wrangler you're getting four wheels, air conditioning, cruise control, and a radio. <laughs> that is basically what you're getting. Uh, sometimes you'll see these on like rental car lots. It's not to say it isn't a good Jeep, but it's just very basic. Now the one up from that is going to be a very high volume seller, the Sport S. It costs over $3,000 more in the four-door trim, $36,550 but you get a lot more vehicle for the money, and this is gonna be the one that you see all the time, and it's a great Jeep. So for 36,550, you get alloy wheels, you get power locks, power windows, you have a real infotainment screen versus the little itty bitty one in the base model. It still is a pretty basic Wrangler. It has cloth seats. I mean, out of the box, it's not a luxury vehicle, but it is much better equipped than the Sport trim. So going up from there, we come to the Sahara. And the Sahara is, for all intents and purposes, the luxury-oriented Wrangler. So this is the one, it's got nice big wheels from the factory. It has kind of classier bumpers, is the only way to describe it. It has color-matched fenders, because most Wranglers have black fenders. Uh, it's got nicer stitching on the inside. It comes with side steps uh, from the factory, even in the base form. So the Sahara is a great vehicle if you're looking for a little bit more luxury off the bat, um, without having to spec out, you know, feature by feature of sport. It starts at about $39,000, but it is good value if you're looking for kind of the more street-oriented Wrangler. You just want to be able to take the top off and have fun um, without going crazy, crazy off-road. 
Now, of course, we have to talk about the Rubicon, because this is the one that all the Jeep fanboys rave on about. There's a reason for that. The Rubicon is the top dog Wrangler. It has different axles than the other Wranglers. It has larger tires. It has locking front and rear differentials. It has the sway bar disconnect. It definitely looks the coolest as well, but for 95% of people, like I said at the beginning, there's really no reason to get the Rubicon trim because even in the most basic street-oriented Wrangler, it's still gonna go places you wouldn't believe out in the woods. It's gonna far excel just about every other new car, crossover, SUV on the market. Unless you gotta have locking differentials because you're going into some of the wildest stuff. Um, you know, in Alaska, for example, there's no reason to get it. You're better off buying like a sport, putting on better tires, and just having fun with it because the, uh, the, the transfer case and the axles and all the upgrades mean it is an expensive vehicle. It starts at $42,000, but realistically, most Rubicons you see in the lot, they're gonna be like 50 plus grand. So, let's talk about the next big deal about the Wrangler, the different top configurations, because there are a bunch of different tops, and that's one of the best parts about buying a Wrangler, is you can pull the top off. Now, certain Wranglers, depending on the trim, come standard with either the soft top or the hard top. Oftentimes, you have to spec the hard top in the aftermarket. Uh, really three basic tops. So the soft top is a canvas material. It's super easy to fold back. Uh, it's just, you know, nice to be able to flip it back, have fun in the sun immediately, and then close it up really easily. And for 2021 and the new Wrangler JLs, the top is much easier than the old school ones. If you had Wranglers in the 90s and the early 2000s with the zippers where you're really struggling with them, that's long gone. The new soft tops are pretty killer. The cons, well, let's be honest, not as weather resistant as a hard top and certainly not as secure. Someone uh, with, you know, the want to steal whatever you have inside the vehicle could certainly slash it and grab it. So if you live in the city, I'd probably avoid the soft top if you're street parking it. If you live in Colorado like we do here, I would probably avoid it as well because we get a lot of snow and it's just not quite as secure um, in terms of, you know, weather insulation. There's also a premium version of the soft top. You can now get it in different colors, which is cool. That's going to cost you six to eight hundred bucks, depending on what color you get. But it's nice having that option. So let's step up to the hard top. A couple of different hard top options. So there's a black three-piece top. It's called three-piece because the front two panels are easily removable, allow some sun in, and then the rear panel above the back seats. That is a big monster to take off. It takes a few people, and you have to have a place to store it. Advantages of the hard top: much more secure, much better in cold weather, and it's nice being able to remove what they're called the freedom panels in the front to let the sun in. Disadvantages of the hard top, it's pretty heavy if you want to remove the whole thing, and it's just, you know, it's it's not quite as fun in your Wrangler, let's be honest. It's, uh, it's nice having the soft top to throw it back, but for I'd say 90% of people, you're probably better off getting the hard top because even though you're buying the Wrangler to take the top off, most people probably don't get around to it on a regular basis. So the hard top is available in um, a, a standard black configuration. That's going to cost you, you know, over a thousand dollars. And then there's also a body color configuration. So if you want it to be paint matched to the Jeep, depending on the trim, and it varies a lot on the trim, but it'll be about $1,300 or so. Next top, this one is an interesting one. The Sky One Touch Power Top. This is an interesting idea. So it still is a hard top configuration along the sides and the back, but the middle portion is a powered soft top. Push a button and it rolls back, much like a giant cloth sunroof. It's cool, but it is ridiculously expensive. $4,000, give or take, depending on the trim. That's a lot of money for a top. It's a, a very complex mechanism. Uh, you can remove the windows, but you can't pull off the whole mechanism. It's not really recommended to do so. I would avoid the, the Sky One Touch Power Top. The benefit, of course, is air in your face with the push of a button. The disadvantage, it's expensive and complicated. I would probably avoid that, to be honest. So those are the, the, the top options. Now, what about steps? I understand that, um, you know, as a daily driver, it, you want something that's easy to get in and out of. Some versions of the Wrangler come equipped with side steps. Others don't, but pretty much every version of the Wrangler 
it's an option to equip side steps on the side. And there's a whole bunch of different options. There are tubular side steps, there are chrome side steps, uh, there are plastic side steps. It's just kind of up to your preference. What do you want? I am about six foot one. I've never really needed the side steps to get in and out of. They range between like 500 and a thousand dollars. I will say if you are planning on taking the Jeep seriously off road, the side steps are a hindrance because you lose a little bit of ground clearance unless you get the heavy duty rock slider step by Mopar. That's a thousand bucks, but it's a steel thing it's really sturdy if you hit it into a rock some stuff to keep in mind uh, but that really is more of a preference thing all right let's talk about the seats so uh, most Wranglers are going to come standard with cloth seats you can get it in black or tan depending on the trim I would honestly stick with the cloth seats you can upgrade in many cases to leather it's gonna vary greatly depending on cost but you know fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars depending on the trim Whichever trim you go for, the seats aren't that comfortable. I hate to say it, but I prefer the cloth seats to the leather seats. The leather seats are modeled after a park bench. They are just really firm. At least the cloth seats have a little bit more kind of cushion to them. Um, obviously, they're a little bit harder to clean out, but they're not too bad. And I would just save your money and get the cloth. Of course, some versions don't have the cloth, and then you're going to live with the leather. It's not horrible. It's just not my preference. Infotainment and technology. This is where things get interesting. Three different screens available in the Wrangler. There's the very itty bitty one you'll find on the uh, entry level sports. Not very good and most Jeeps aren't going to have it for 2021. Most Jeeps are going to have the standard 7 inch Uconnect screen. It works perfectly for most people. You can upgrade to the 8.4 inch screen uh, and that gives you some additional options we'll talk about but personally I would just stick with the 7 inch screen. It doesn't have built-in navigation but it does have stuff like Apple CarPlay and you're better off just plugging in your phone and running that off the uh, screen than fussing with the standard navigation. Uh, if you do want the larger 8.4 inch screen, once again depends on trim but it's between 18 and two thousand dollars. That'll give you 1.4 extra inches to play with on the screen, premium audio, some different applications. Uh, it's cool, I guess, but not really necessary. Just save your money, stick with the 7 inch screen. Now speaking of audio, you can upgrade for about $1,300 to the premium audio system. Uh, this is kind of depending on your uh, your audio needs. I think the bass system sounds pretty good. The Alpine system basically gives you just a monster subwoofer in the rear, but in my opinion, that's the big difference. If you want a ton of bass, get the Alpine. If you don't, just save the $1,300 and get the standard audio. Now, one option you are going to want, and this is a big safety deal, if you take nothing away from this, is you're gonna wanna buy the LED headlight and fog lamp group. Um, <laughs> I've had so, <laughs> I've driven so many of these new Wrangler JLs, both uh, with the standard headlights, I, I actually own one of the standard headlights. I've owned two of them actually with the standard headlights and then the uh, ones with the upgraded LEDs. The LEDs are a must. I, honestly, these standard headlights are like candles in the wind. It's so hard to see at night with these standard headlights. I might be exaggerating a little bit, as some people will point out, but they're just not good. The, the LEDs are a must. Now, there are actually two different versions of the LEDs. There's the headlight and fog light group. That's going to be about $950. Or if you uh, change trims, they may ask you to get the full uh, LED group, which gives you LED turn signals and I believe LED tail lights as well. Here it is. Yes, it does give you LED tail lights. Regardless if it's the $1,300 group or just the headlights, please get the LED headlights. They are expensive in the aftermarket too, so you're better off getting them from the factory, but it's just a safety thing. One issue with them is if you live in a cold place like Colorado, they don't get super warm, so they don't do a great job of de-icing themselves like the standard headlights do, but I don't care. It's just, <laughs> please, you, you want to see at night. All right, next up, this little group here, the Trailer Tow and Heavy Duty Electrical Group. To be honest, no Wranglers really tow all that much. The max tow rating is 3,500 pounds when properly equipped. But the tow and heavy duty electrical group give you something pretty cool beyond just the hitch and the receiver. It gives you these little auxiliary um, panels here. And this is a panel that lives in the center console. And basically, it's factory wiring for things like aftermarket um, light pods and light bars. And if you're planning on upgrading your Jeep, it's a really nice thing to have. Trust me, it's, it's a great thing just to be able to push a button on your dash. It's already there. You don't have to drill a hole. You don't have to run wires. It's ready to go. And for 800 bucks, it's well worth it. Now, I have a Gladiator, and I didn't get this group, and we retrofitted this group from Mopar, because you can buy it after the fact. 
it is a monster job to install. Like the whole dashboard has to come apart. Then you got to wire in the switches, and then you've got to bring it to your authorized Jeep dealer to get it programmed into the ECU. If you're planning on upgrading your Jeep, if you're planning on towing, just get the $800 uh, tow and HD group from the factory. It is well worth it. All right, let's move on to some other things which are good and not so good. So <laughs> speaking of tops, <laughs> I need to mention this. Uh, there is an option, believe it or not, for something called the hard top headliner by, um, Yes, by Mopar. And what this is, it's basically carpet that they glue to the top of your ceiling, and it's supposed to kind of dampen the noise. I don't really think it makes that big of a difference in the real world. It doesn't look that good. It looks like someone tacked some shag carpeting on your roof, and it's 525 bucks. Oof. Would not recommend that. Strongly would not recommend getting the, uh, the hardtop group. So some other things you definitely should get are the remote proximity and keyless entry because there's nothing worse than having remote proximity on your Jeep, which is basically the little key that you can leave in your pocket. You don't actually have to take the key out to start the vehicle, but if you don't get the remote proximity keyless entry option, you have to take the key out to unlock the car which is annoying. It's better off uh, spending 545 bucks and just leaving it in your pocket and grabbing the door and using the buttons. It's a strongly um, kind of needed option in my opinion on the new Wranglers. It's just such a great convenience thing. So let's talk about other options. The Rubicons have the option for the steel bumper group. It's expensive, 1600 bucks, but it is really high quality. I like it because it uh, can be made to accept the winch. You can pull the uh, sides off. If you're not going to take it off road, eh, don't worry about it. But if you're looking at, um, you, you know, just using the included hardware, I would definitely get a steel bumper. A lot of people do aftermarket ones though, so not really needed. Another must. This is a big one. Take notes, folks. The cold weather group: heated seats and a heated steering wheel and remote start. If you get an automatic transmission, do it. It's awesome. It's a really, really great thing to be able to uh, have heated seats and heated steering wheel, especially in cold climates, and they work great. Probably the hottest heated steering wheel on the market. Probably the hottest heated seats on the market. It's well worth the $700. Uh, some other options. There is the option for a full-time four-wheel drive system. So the way that this works, and it is about, I think it's 600 bucks, 700 bucks. Here's, here's the deal. Uh, all Wranglers have four-wheel drive from the factory, but it's selectable. So what that means is you have to um, manually engage it. So driving around every day, it'll be in rear-wheel drive, and then when you go in the snow, you click it in a four-wheel drive. But when the snow dries, you have to stick it back in a two-wheel drive where you could potentially bind up the drivetrain and do some damage. Not a big deal as long as you remember to do it, but if you're a little bit forgetful and you're driving in the snow in two-wheel drive, the thing's gonna suck and there is a potential that you're gonna spin out unless you stick it in the four high, in which case it's unstoppable. Now there is an option for a heavy-duty full-time four-wheel drive, which gives you an auto function. So in auto, you can leave it in auto and then never touch it. You can run in the dry, in the snow, and it will just determine whether or not it needs four-wheel drive. It works well. Um, this is just, it's one of those things you need to spend the 700 bucks to remember to do it. It's only available on certain trims, but I'm not really sure you need it. I like to just click it back on a four-wheel drive, so I know I'm in four-wheel drive, but it's there if you want it. Uh, it's now also available on the Rubicon, which is pretty cool before it was only on the Sahara. All right, some other things that you should probably avoid. <sighs> I hate this option. This is, this is my biggest pet peeve. The trail rated kit. Let's see if I can show it here. Here it is. Trail rated kit, $195. I got this on a JK about four years ago when we bought it new. It is the worst value in the industry. It's a little bag with a toe strap, some gloves, and a D-ring. It's 200 bucks. Please avoid the trail rated kit. Not worth it. Definitely not worth it. Uh, a lot of the kind of Mopar stuff, it it's, depends on what you want. I mean, like there's grab handles, those are 80 bucks, those are nice to have. The floor mats are excellent. I would strongly recommend the Mopar floor mats. I've had a bunch of those and they work really, really well. The cargo liners and, and all that, it just is up to preference. I find them to be pretty expensive, but if, you're, uh, if you just want basically one uh, stop shop for all your accessories, Mopar is not a bad way to do it. Packages, all right, advanced safety group. Well, there's two of them. There's the advanced safety group and the standard safety group. Uh, this is it's up to you. The safety group gives you blind spot monitoring. It gives you park sense in the back, backup sensors and LED taillights. And then the advanced safety group, which is another 800 bucks, gives you uh, adaptive cruise control and high beam assist and that kind of thing. I personally have never had a Jeep with any of the safety groups on it. Um, 
but they're not that hard to park. I don't really need the sensors. They're pretty small, so you typically don't need the blind spot monitoring. Adaptive cruise control would be really nice, but you'd have to get both groups to get the adaptive cruise control, and I just don't think it's really all that worth it. All right. I think we're getting there, guys. We are almost there. Uh, some of the options are very expensive, like you can get the uh, dual door group with premium uppers, so uh, basically half doors. That's pretty cool, but it's over $4,000. I probably would just take the doors off anyways because you can do that on any Wrangler. Um, one option I would definitely not get is the dual top group. There's an option to have both the hard and the soft top, but what they do is they have the soft top hinged in the trunk and then uh, you can pull the hard top off and de-hinge the soft top. It just ruins your trunk space. Uh, I took a Jeep around the country to all 50 states with this top group and it was the most annoying thing. So I wouldn't get the dual top group. It's also over $2,000. So let's talk about some of the special editions because there are a ton of them. Special editions are primarily colors and wheels and bumpers and steps and colors and wheels and bumpers and steps. So stuff like the Islander, the 80th anniversary, the Freedom Edition, the Sport Altitude, the Sahara Altitude, most of these are just ways that you can package different colors and options and wheels and bumpers and steps. But there are kind of two exceptions. There's the High Altitude, which is the new Jeep. This is a fully topped out kind of street oriented Jeep. It has 20 inch wheels, believe it or not. It's got color matched top, mirrors, fenders and bumpers, so it's got a unique look to it. Um, very luxurious, it's got these crazy stitched seats. If you want the ultimate luxury Jeep, get it. If not, uh, I don't know if that's my thing, but what is definitely my thing and is really, really cool are the Willys. So the Willys is uh, kind of a throwback Jeep to the very first uh, World War II Jeeps, and I just love them. I think they are pretty good value. There are two different versions. There's the Willys Sport, which is like the ultimate stripped down one, and the Willys um, just standard version. The difference is about $4,000. Now, the Willy Sport is probably my favorite Jeep in the lineup because it's very basic. You still have the tiny radio, you still have roll-up windows, which in my opinion is great in the Jeep because it makes it more durable and just more utilitarian. But the Willys gives you true off-road tires. It gives you these really cool retro stickers on the tailgate. It's awesome. I just love the look of it. Uh, and honestly, it's not going to be as good off-road as something like the Rubicon, but it's still going to be pretty good. Now, some of the Jeeps are available with something called the anti-spin rear differential. That's a limited slip rear diff. If you have the option to get it, it's definitely worth the money. It improves them off-road. But the Willys and the Willys Sport, two of my favorite trims. I also am a sucker for the Islander. I know it's just stickers and, <laughs> and colors and, and wheels, but it's a good-looking Jeep and uh, just a little bit unique. All right, I think we made it through the big stuff, which we definitely did. Whew. So don't get overwhelmed, guys. Here are the big takeaways. Uh, decide if you want a two or a four door. Chances are you're going to want a four door. Decide on the engine. I personally would get the standard V6 with the manual or the automatic. Decide on the top for me. Just the black painted hard top would be perfect. Um, decide on the screen. Standard seven inch screen is the one I would go with. Decide on the seats, cloth seats. Uh, and then from there, it's all just basically preference. Don't get the hardtop headliner. Don't get the trail rated kit because that's kind of a waste of money. Do get the remote keyless entry. Do get the cold weather group and do get the LED. So that would be my suggestion. The two Jeeps that we didn't talk about, the 4xe, that's the plug-in hybrid. That's pretty pricey, starts at 50 grand. I can't speak too much of that one because I haven't driven it yet. And then of course we have the Top Dog Wrangler, the 392 with 460 horsepower. Uh, I can't speak to that one either because I haven't driven that one yet. But from what I've heard uh, from some leaks from dealers, it looks like it's going to start at about $75,000. So we'll have to see what that's like. But as always, this has been Tommy with the Fastlane Car. I sure hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the section below and I'll try to get to them. But as always, check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.